Back at you boys. We're gonna do a different style of video today. As I promised, we're gonna do some learning how to videos. So I have my young technician here. We have a Toyota Corolla, it's an 04. It's in for a small EVAP leak according to the fault codes. Does it have a leak? We don't know. We're gonna find out together because we have not done this test yet. But the purpose of this is I'm gonna walk them through how to use the equipment and I'm gonna walk them through how to test on this Toyota. Every make and model is a little bit different. Uh, this is an earlier Toyota. Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't inc uh, include the uh, fixed orifice tube, but the pump on there, leak detection pump, it has. I think it has chambers and stuff that it determines for the pressure, uh, take pressure if there's a leak or not. Either way, there is a vent hose that will need to access and block off the seal of the system, as long as the uh, purge valve's not stuck open or the fuel cap or lines op open or leaking this flow gauge should go to zero, but we're gonna discuss that during this test. So, he's in a, I'm gonna walk him through how to operate it. We do have the gas door open, so when we do testing, we're gonna look there. So, all right, Bradley, so most cars have this, it's called an EVAP uh, service port. Mm -hmm. it's, it should be green. And once you move this cap, there should be a Schrader valve underneath it, okay? I don't know if you can see that in there. One thing to, to note that Schrader valve is left hand thread so you need to turn it to the right to remove it if you do so and we and every shop's different they're gonna have a different smoke machine they're gonna have different accessories we just have the snap on I've had it for a long time works great so there's a tool here that we screw on to the service port one has a, a Schrader valve tool that pushes in on one does not we're going to try this one first. The reason I have two is because sometimes you screw it on there and it leaks from the threads. So you have to remove the straighter valve and put a hose on there and then um, stick it in there. So, or take it out if it's not pressing it. Because sometimes the straighter valves, they get stuck. Mm -hmm. But we have two. So go ahead and screw it on there. We'll give that a shot. You know if the straighter valve is not opening because as soon as you put uh, smoke in there, the gauge drops to zero. And that tells you you need to remove the straighter valve and put the other test port in there so that's there okay so let's go and hook up this machine here you need to get battery power and the compressed air to it yeah i, I kind of threw everything off there for you bud making it harder So you need battery power. You don't have to use a car battery. You need any battery you want. So at the end of this, this is where the smoke's going to be. Compressed air. All right, so let's talk about this. This is your flow control. Plus is completely maxed out, one PSI, and then this is turned off. Anything in the middle is controlling the gauge. It's just like it says, more and less. Okay, this is your on and off button. If it's on, it'll be red right here lit up. And this is your, your gauge, how much of a uh, leak you have. When you first turn on the machine, you're gonna, it's gonna be filling it, so it's gonna show it's leaking. But after about 30 seconds or so, it should settle. If it's not settling, you have a leak. Okay. When that's, don't hold that to the absolute mm -hmm. truth because the larger the system, the larger it takes to fill the, the more tank. Time it takes yeah, to fill. And it takes more smoke. Always test it. So hit that button, smoke should come out. As long as you have smoke, you're good. I'm going to turn it off. But one thing to note, after five minutes, this will turn off automatically. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this red light will be gone. Okay. So what I tell my guys is once they have everything set up, turn this on, and then come back out here just mentally know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll come by, oh, there's no leak, and then things turned off. Okay. Because it will go to the zero yeah, if there's no there's flow. No pressure behind so we'll go ahead and put in there, and then we need to access and locate the vent valve okay, or the vent venting hose okay okay but so you know this hose is going to go back most likely to the charcoal canister tank mm -hmm. and this other hose is going to go to a purge valve okay that purge valve has also has another hose to it that goes mm -hmm. to the intake okay for vacuum mm -hmm. so that vacuum is always at the purge valve when it's activated it opens Mm -hmm. allows vacuum to go in and take it from the tank and pull the vapors out. Okay. That's how that works. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go up. We're going to find a charcoal, charcoal canister in this. We're going to take a look at what kind of version it is. And from there, we, I'll show you how to locate that 
vent hose. We'll go up, we'll see you in a second. All right, so this is the charcoal canister assembly, guys. On this one, and this one does not have the uh, leak detection pump on here. It would be mounted on the side. It has an electrical connector going to it. This does encounter, it does have a vacuum switching valves here. I, and it, I think there's, they're right there. Okay, so it's a charcoal canister vacuum switching valve. And you have, some, it looks like some other valves hooked up here. It looks like that's a vent valve, the tank, and then diaphragm valves here. So, this one you got to locate the, the, the vent hose okay that's venting the gasoline vapors coming out of this charcoal canister okay which is right here i know that because see this if you follow this hose it goes right here inside this little little bracket here and it's sitting like this and you can kind of see it's a little bit wet actually uh, but that's it and they do that so that any Fumes going through this charcoal canister, the charcoal absorbs it, and some maybe it doesn't do a very good job, it vents away so people don't smell it. And it goes through here and it probably cycles out the back of the car. Uh, of course, you don't want it hitting the exhaust, but we need to block this off. If you don't, as soon as you turn on that smoke, all the smoke's gonna come out of right here because nothing's gonna shut this off. So, in that blue bucket, I have a tool for it. We've done these before. A little plug this one should fit it that should fit in there nice and tight like i said you have to find your own plug it's not in a kit which should fit okay all right from there this system should be sealed okay uh, if we have a leak we should we we'll should see the leak so let's go we're going to pull it down turn the machine on see what we got see you in a second all right so before i hook this up i want to go over so that was a charcoal canister down there you can see it really had one uh, electronic uh, switching valve hooked up to it, right? So it uses, it should use the fuel tank pressure uh, sensor to determine where the leak is, okay? Uh, so if we pressurize this system and there's no leak, there's something going on with that sensor, that vacuum valve's not working, or there's something going on in that, in that canister, which is all one assembly, by the way, okay? So we need to rule that out. So if this thing is sealed, we're looking at a charcoal canister in this in this situation, okay? Uh, pending that the vac the um, purge valve sealed and nothing and gas cap sealed and all that. So, all right, go ahead and activate it. You want the flow in the very very. You always get the flow to the highest, and if there is a leak and you do locate a leak, it's smart to lower the volume of the smoke to kind of help you narrow narrow in. Because when you have a leak, if it's mm -hmm. large. And this is an older car, and even though it says it's a small leak on the older cars, I think 40 thousandths and smaller is considered a small leak. Okay. On the new cars, it's, I think it's 10 thousandths and smaller. 40 thousandths is a pretty good sized leak, so I, I, it may say it's small, but mm -hmm. it may be a pretty good sized leak. Because okay. it's changed the last 16, 20 years, yeah. you know what I'm saying? System. So, uh, yeah, what they said small mm -hmm. is actually large today. Okay. So. Yeah, most cars it wouldn't read anything would below twenty thousand. It wouldn't even read it. And the no, new cars are, they can go to ten thousand below. They can check for leaks. So, with this small tank, I we should be starting to see this needle, this needle or this ball start to settle. See it bouncing up and down. I'm gonna say we have a leak based off of this. It, it should be going a lot lower than this. Let's watch it. She's kind of staying between, what, 15 and 20, somewhere in that area. It's kind of bouncing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see how it's going bouncing up, bouncing up? That We have a leak. Let's go look for a leak. I think, let's go look at the gas. Make sure that cap. Cap. Don't touch any of it. Never touch your gas caps, guys. Just leave everything as is. Mm -hmm. The worst thing to do is go tighten that gas cap, and that was your leak you had no idea about. I've seen that happen too many times. But, yeah, you definitely, we have a leak, 100% here. Let's go over together and see one thing I'm gonna tell you. If it's a really small leak, uh, a cadescent bulb is the best way to find it. The LED lights are a little more difficult to find leaks. You're gonna do it, so I'm gonna help you find it. So hopefully we find it and find out. We're gonna keep it rolling. Let's, let's see what we got. The black lights do pretty good, the blue lights. They do really good for leaks, so we're using that. Even though it's, I think it's LED anyways, it may not, it's hard to tell. No leak.
Looks good. And one thing you do is smell it too. I know it sounds weird, but if there is a, a really small leak, I mm -hmm. come across, you can hear it too sometimes. You put your ear against it, that's a tip, you hear ear gas gushing out. Okay. And you can smell it sometimes. And it's no noise, and it's, I don't have any smell. So let's see what else we got going on. Hey, you're gonna find out what we find out. We don't even know yet. So. And, backstory, this has been the dealership twice for this leak, and they told the customer, don't worry about it. They don't know why the light's on, ignore it, it's not hurting anything. So, and it's written to the Toyota. Not bashing anybody, but I have, let's find out, because it does have a leak. They don't see anything else yet, so. All right, so, what do you find? All right, there's, we, I don't know if you can pick it up. BG, can you pick that up? Can you see it? Okay, that's a, it's a pretty good leak, actually. Pretty good sized leak. Uh, I'm gonna go up there. I'm gonna lower it down a little bit. I'm gonna go up there and slow it down. Let me know if you can narrow in on that, okay? All right. What's up? Go ahead. Let me know how low I can go. For you. Keep going right there. Alright, you just tell me less or more, okay? Okay. Can you get exactly where it's at? Alright, I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stop at the zero, I'm gonna go up just a little bit. There you go. More. More. Right there. Looks like it's coming out of that hose. That's good, Neil. You find it? Yeah. Where's it at? What'd you find, bud? Looks like it's coming out of that hose right there. What hose? A bad hose? Yep. Have you tugged on anything? Uh-uh. Let me turn it in. What? Did it come off just like that? Yeah. It's popped right off. Can you, you want to cap that off and confirm it? Yep. Why don't you get a rubber cap? And plug it. Yeah, plug it. We gotta plug both sides. Sorry, Brian. Interesting. I think I have uh I don't think I got a thing for that too. I had a clip for it. Capped it off? Yep. Okay. Now we're going to find a way to cap this. Make sure we don't have a broken line or something. Or that fitting might be cracked. We'll find out. That's, they shouldn't have pulled off that easy, honestly. <laughs> Now, there should be some rubber plugs. And that vacuum cord ahead. Huh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna find a vacuum port for it. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So we're gonna show you what we got here. So I took the clip. Somebody's been in here. You could. There's this thing's all mangled up. Mangled up. Look at this thing. So, this is that hose that he pulled off here. And you can see it's been chewed up. Uh, he, I guess when he pulled the hose, these, this came out of it. Uh, you're supposed to squeeze it and it comes out. You can see how soft it, it's just gonna snap. I have this in here, but I don't trust it. You can kind of see how it pops off. We're gonna give it a shot. We'll see, we have, we capped this off. We'll see if this, this hose is gonna work. If not, I'm gonna have to make something else work with this. It's not a big deal. I mean, it's just a hose. The worst comes to shove here, push comes to cup, shove, just cut it off here, put another hose larger here and a smaller here, and clamp it on there. But let's just see if that's actually the issue. I'm gonna turn this on real fast. Let's see if it pours out. I'm gonna 
I'm gonna corner her full blast. There okay. she goes. That thing's gonna be weak, really weak. I'll let you know what the gauge says. Box, Brian, where you pulled that uh, line off of? Up top. Not that I see. So you, so you were right on the hose, huh? Uh huh. Nothing that I see coming out of the charcoal box. She's at 10,000 and dropping right now. Yeah, she's dropping right now. Looks like there's just a little bit of smoke coming out of here. She'd be coming out there. She's not dropping below. Yeah, little bit's coming out from what I can see. Where's your black light? Turn that light off. I can smell it. There's a yeah. strong smell. There's vapors coming off of this. I smell it somewhere else. Oh, okay, yeah, it's coming out of this. Mm -hmm. I don't see the smoke, though. It's real faint. There, yeah, I see it. Man, that's why it you doesn't... You just barely see it. You can barely see it come out. It's boiling out of here, so... I can't seal that better than it's dimming now, so we're gonna have to get a hose on here. It's gotta fit this and fit this right here. So we're gonna make... We're gonna get a hose and we're gonna make it. Make it fit. Make it right. We'll be right back. Alright, guys. So, you obviously can't buy this hose because it's 04. We're just gonna, we're gonna take a vacuum, fuel vacuum hose here, guys. Put it on this. And we're just gonna go right on top of this where it goes into. I'm gonna go try to go over that nipple so it's a tighter fit. Ah, oh, there she is, she's on there. So, all right, let's see if we got a leak now. I mean, that's an acceptable fix, guys. There's nothing wrong with that. That, the hose before was leaking. It's a clip style quick, but the it's broken. They do make, uh, I think Dorm makes a kit. You can use a heat gun on there if you want to go that route, but uh, hose is just perfectly fine. So she's not under pressure. She's not leaking. Let's see what we got up here. Let's see what we got. And I'm gonna lower down. You can watch it, BG. Grab that. We're going to all right, so red light's on, green light's on. She's sealed, so that's all it was. So now we have a little better light here. So this quick connect connector is all jambled up and it was not sealed. It looks like it's missing the O-ring inside there. It looks like it probably is. I don't know if you can see that. There's really nothing in there. It's just too dark. In the human eye, you can see but they just put a hose on there, fuel hose. You'd be done with it. She's fixed. You know how to use this machine. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll go over more different vehicles, GM towards we get them in. Because if you're gonna do it, you do it right. See ya.